All right, first up, let's get you the updates on the developments in the Israel-Hamas war. Intense fighting continues as Israel's offensive has escalated across Gaza. U.S. President Joe Biden had a phone call with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu where they expressed concern for the remaining hostages. Biden said it is important to protect civilians in the fighting. Biden also spoke to King Abdullah of Jordan. During talks with Netanyahu, Biden reaffirmed that it was Hamas's refusal to release women, civilian hostages that broke down the humanitarian pause and that the United States will continue its efforts to pursue every opportunity to free the hostages. Earlier, U.S. officials said they are not close to another ceasefire deal, while Hamas officials said chances of further hostage release are dwindling. We're, we're not close to inking another deal on a humanitarian pause, um, and nor do I have any uh, news to break here today about the return of, of hostages, either ours or those of many other countries that are being held hostage. Um, we're still trying to get as much information as we can about the hostages that are being held. <laughs> Israel's offensive has intensified in southern Gaza. The fiercest fight is unfolding in Khan Yunus, which is now witnessing massive devastation. Israeli strikes are hitting residential buildings, leaving dozens trapped under the rubble. <laughs> The IDF continues combat, close quarter combat against Hamas terrorists in the Gaza Strip, including in Khan Yunis, eliminating tunnel shafts and the terrorists operating within them. Our commando forces are conducting raids in Khan Yunis and battling Hamas terrorists with forces striking targets using precise real-time intelligence. The Israeli army has said they have arrested and interrogated hundreds of suspects in the terrorist activities. Soon after making this announcement, a video showing hundreds of Palestinian men, hundreds sitting in rows on a street in northern Gaza, has appeared. Men appeared to be stripped in the video, with their heads bowed as Israeli troops guard them. Israeli media says these men include Hamas militants who had surrendered to the Israeli forces. However, reports in Arab media says that also they also include journalists and that they were forced to strip and were searched before being taken to an unknown destination. Meanwhile, the Israeli army has released another video from northern Gaza. The IDF says it retrieved from the body cam of a Hamas fighter after combat in Gaza's Jabalia. The video purports to show armed Hamas fighters inside a civilian building. In another video released by the Israeli military, Hamas militants can be seen firing anti-tank missiles from civilian areas in Gaza. Israel says that the son of its former army chief, who is currently a minister in the country's war cabinet, has been killed in Gaza fighting. Israeli media says the 25-year-old was badly injured after a tunnel shaft exploded and later he died in the hospital. Earlier, a guided missile attack from Lebanon killed, also killed a 60-year-old farmer in northern Israel. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Lebanon can turn into Gaza if Hezbollah starts a war. Meanwhile, calls have been growing to demand a war crime investigation for the journalists who have been killed in Israeli strikes in Lebanon. United States has said that it is imperative that Israel's inquiry into the killing of a Reuters journalist in Lebanon comes to a conclusion. Uh, no bounds, so I'm deeply sorry for this loss. Um, and it is important and appropriate that it be fully and thoroughly investigated. My understanding is that Israel has initiated such an investigation and it will be important to see that investigation come to a conclusion and to see the results of the investigation. 
In other updates indicating fallout of the war across the world, employees at a cafe in Oakland, California, were filmed denying a customer said to be Jewish from using the bathroom at their shop. Highlighting another incident of anti-Semitism, that is. While the University of Pennsylvania lost a major $100 million donation in protest of its president's response to reported anti-Semitism on campus.